ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Connecting Fragments. We're starting off today with arrest of Ministry of Health and Welfare official, and let's continue with the whole Lowell scandal. Does this, like, erase stuff we've did? Nope. Yeah, nope. Okay, so we're looking for... Sorry, I, I literally already... Arrest of Ministry. All right. Here it is. Right, this is the guy that got arrested, and then he died in jail. By natural causes, supposedly. The moment the local reporter said that, a group of cameras waiting to pit Waiting in front of the car's route, all use their burning flashes at once to take pictures of the inside of the car. The deputy director of the Ministry of Health and Welfare's Pharmaceutical Affairs Bureau, Shiduru Onuma, was sitting in the center of the back seat between two detectives. The big scandal. And a short distance beyond the car, a group of people could be seen waving banners and placards with various abusive phrases written on them in jumbled letters like murderer and corrupt official, and the mob of people slowly moved toward the car all at once shouting in rage. Hitler. あんたは人間じゃない。鬼だ。彼らは一斉に大沼容疑者の乗る車に向かって罵声を浴びせています。あ、今盗賊がありました。死刑。お前の罪で俺の息子は。罵声だ。石を投げつけた人は周囲の警察官によって取り押さえられたとのことです。
I woke up with a light cough and a strange irritation in my throat. It sounds like it. Already. Like the house is burning. Looking at the clock, it was past 3 a.m. Since I got into bed around midnight, that meant I have gotten about three hours of sleep. I always took pride in being a good sleeper, so waking up in the middle of the night was abnormal. But tomorrow, or technically today, I have morning training with the track and field club. If I don't get enough rest, I'm more likely to injure myself at practice. I thought that and rode back over, but I suddenly started feeling thirsty and opened my eyes again. For some reason, I couldn't sleep. Falling back to sleep would be ideal, but I decided I should get a drink of water from the kitchen to cool off, so I climbed out of bed. Then I stood up and unsteadily walked toward the door, reaching my hand for the doorknob, and it's gonna be hot, right? The moment I opened the door, okay, it wasn't hot, <laughs> intense heat blew into the room. I couldn't help but turn down my head and stumble, but I raised my head and opened my eyes and was so shocked I froze on the spot. Damn. We're definitely getting the answer to this arc, huh? That's nice that they're gonna tell us what the fuck happened with Tomoe's dad. Maybe. Hopefully I'm not saying that and it doesn't happen again. Even though the light should have been out, the hallway was lit up in bright red. And even though it was the middle of the night, there was a shivering, roaring sound and a strange order in the air. And what's more, the stairs in the corner of the hallway leading down to the first floor were smothered in an intense blaze. The moment the plate on my door opposite of my room came into view and I came back to my senses. Madoka might still be asleep without noticing this. I rushed over and banged so hard on her door while screaming out loud, forgetting that it was the middle of the night. Madoka came out looking sleepy, but as soon as she saw the flames brilliantly dying the hallway in light, she opened her eyes wide and stood there trembling at the unfathomable situation. That goes without saying. Nobody sees a fire like this in their everyday life, especially not in your own home. I shouted at the top of my lungs toward my parents who should be sleeping downstairs, but there's no reply. I carefully approached the stairs while watching the fire, raising my voice to call out to them, but again there is no response. I shook my head to stave off the terrible thought that came to mind. No way. That can't be. Plus, my dad is a detective. He should be quick to catch on. Even if he was asleep, there's no way he wouldn't notice something so unusual going on in the house. I'm sure he's or he already ran out of the house. He just couldn't make it upstairs because of the fire. And I'm sure he's watching from the outside house right now, thinking about how to help us. Yes, that must be it. I'm certain of it. I looked back at my room beyond the hallway and gazed out the window. Right there, right, there should be a garden just below my room. The ground there is all dirt, so it's unlikely the fire had spread there. Madoka, 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 
True. After saying that, I forcefully dragged my dote into my room, ran over to the window, opened it and looked down, then I suddenly gasped. I was surprised that the distance to the ground felt far higher than expected. But more importantly, the window and the sliding door in the living room had been had blown off and were lying the in, on the ground in the garden while roaring flames could be seen clearly seen inside the room. And what's more, there were scattered fragments of shattered glass on the ground with sharp evil blades shining that crimson light right at us. I squeezed my voice as hard as I could and cut out to my parents who should be who should already be outside the house. But there's no response. In fact, I didn't see any signs of them near the garden or the entryway. Turning back toward Madoka's pained voice, I saw the flames in the hallway had already spread to the door frame, showing signs of even creeping into the room. There's no time to hesitate. I closed my eyes and made a desperate prayer for the first time in my life, then opened them again. Then I squeezed Madoka's trembling body, wrapped her arms around my shoulder while tearing sheets off the bed and using them as rope to tie us together around the waist. <laughs> Upon hearing that, Madoka clung to my shoulder so tight it felt a little suffocating and she closed her eyes tight with determination. I thought about jumping first so that I'd be able to catch Madoka, but I worried she couldn't bring herself to jump and wouldn't be able to escape until it was too late. So, even though there's some risk involved, this is the best, best method. Even in the worst case, I should be able to land underneath Madoka to protect her. Let's go. I tore off the curtain. I mean, it is so scary, dude. Unlucky, but it made sense the window would explode. Just jumping from a pretty high distance onto a crown covered with glass. Jesus. I tore off the curtain and made it into a lawn stream, then tied it around one of the legs of the bed. Then I firmly grasped it in both hands while hanging outside the window. This is actually smart, though. Just gotta be careful. If it gets too hot and the rope burns off, or you have to just tie it like. Very tight. I don't know if it'll support two teenage girls. Uh, then I firmly grasped it in both hands while hanging outside the window, shaking off my hesitation and fear as I held Madoka in my arms and began to descend to the garden. However... Uh oh. Since it was just a thin piece of cloth, I can't withstand the load of two people. That's what I was saying, dude. So the fabric tore near the middle of the curtain. Even so, the height we fell from was the height of a full-grown adult. So I was able to hit the ground just lightly, stumbling not down on my butt. Okay, that's, yeah, that's not bad. Just the last kind of sucks. Just a few minutes later, the fire had overtaken our room. I had a slight bruise from the fall and a few cuts on my arms from the glass, but I wasn't seriously hurt. And of course, Madoto was fine. Soon after that, we were rescued by firefighters and received first aid in a nearby vacant lot. But even after being rescued, we were both still trembling. <coughs> my nose twitched from the irritating stench all around the area. My throat ate like it was stuffed with burning sand, and coughing wouldn't stop even after taking deep breaths. When I rubbed my cheeks, they were sticky with a mix of soot and sweat. But I was so stunned I couldn't even feel bothered by it. I just kept gazing at the wreckage that should have been my home. Uh -huh. 
After the fire trucks parked along the road began firing water, the flames were finally beginning to calm down. The smoke blew around the area, changed from black to white, and the heat that threatened to burn my skin gradually cooled off. But it's strange. Even though my house was supposed to be bright white and very beautiful, why is it burnt pitch black with no roof, no walls, no windows? Upon hearing that voice, I turned and looked at my sister Madota, who was still shaking in my arms. She was closing her eyes so firmly, it looked like she was trying to escape from reality, tightening, tightly clenching my clothes and never letting go. I wanted to escape too, if it were possible. So many times, I prayed in my heart that the scene was just a delusion from a nightmare. If it's a dream, just wake me up already. Let morning come and bring back the calm, everyday scenery I'd been living in until just yesterday. However, my head became clearer and clearer, and I felt more awake, as if to mock my desperate wish. And the signs of the fire assaulting all five of my senses put my consciousness firmly in reality. I suddenly realized that I'd forgotten about them all this time, then ran over to a nearby ambulance with Madoka. There's nobody there but the staff who had treated us, and no signs of anyone being brought there. Nevertheless, I shook off the increasingly growing bad feeling I had, while grabbing one of the firefighters by the arm and entrusting him with my single hope by asking him all at once. The moment I saw the startled look on the firefighter's face, all the blood in my body began pumping audibly. It can't be, huh? Does that mean the only people rescued from the house were just me and Madoka? Then, mom and dad are... No way. It can't be true. Hey, oh yeah, they did die in the hospital, right? From the direction of that roaring voice, two stretchers covered in white cloth were being carried out by firefighters, breaking through the wall of people. Huh? Two victims? And they suffered cardiac arrest? After hearing that, Madoka pushed me aside as I stood there absentmindedly, and she dashed toward the stretchers. I rushed after her, but there was no time to stop her. Oh yeah, and this is where she sees it, and yeah, I remember Tomoe talking about this, I think. Madoka approached the stretcher and tore off the white cloth, allowing both of us to see what lay underneath. It was... It was... Why? Why? Why did this have to happen to our family? Damn, that was so intense, man. Can't really talk too much. Didn't know what to say, man. That sucks. Jesus. Rip.
the Manai family. All right, next we have investigation closed. Not here. Here it is. After setting the flowers in the flower stand, lighting a stick of incense, and clapping my hands together in silence, I bent down on my knees and deeply bowed in front of the grave. Of course, there's no reply. In front of me was nothing but a stone with letters etched into it, and the remains of a departed man stored beneath it. Nevertheless, as someone who contributed to him and his wife's death, I couldn't think of any better way to apologize. Mino! Mino was right beside me, kneeling on the stone pavement and leaning forward, as large tears came flowing down his face. It looked like he was in pain even before we got here. Seeing the tombstone right in front of him must have really got into him. But I don't think there's anything embarrassing about a full grown man doing so in this situation. In fact, I was envious about his youthful propensity to express his emotions so honestly. A dull thud rang out. Looking down, Mino was pounding his fists on the ground in front of him. Ooh, five years ago. Flashback. Mino was appointed as a young executive candidate for the career group, and had been serving as a police officer since he was assigned to the Public Security Bureau. But since he had no actual investigation experience, and only ever worked a desk job, Minai was assigned to be his tutor on, the, on account of his exceptional track record. <laughs> Having said that, Yusuke didn't pay much heed to Mino's audacious demeanor. In fact, he was willing to play along with him, serving as a cushion to eliminate conflicts with others. As a matter of fact, I was planning to break down Mino's aggressive overconfidence and retrain him, but it seems Yusuke's educational policy was the best way to handle a competitive spirit like his. Mino had grown since then, polishing his skills and his senses. He became motivated and capable enough to act as a squad leader in the Shirakaba Mountain Village Siege Incident just a few years later. He wasn't raised with a limited outlook, so he was able to achieve great success through his unconventional thoughts and courage. And Mino too had full confidence in the open-hearted Yusuke. Even after they stopped being boss and subordinate to one another, Mino never stopped addressing him as Minai-san and always spoke to him in an honorific language. He always listened to him and respected any comments and suggestions Yusuke gave him. For a self-confident man like Mino, that was a rare thing. Mino continued up to apologize, rubbing his head on the ground and crying non-stop. This was the second time I'd seen him this deeply in tears. 
The first was the night of the fire at Eustace's house. Or rather, I should say the arson that claimed his life. This is just sad, man. These two, <laughs> these two entrants have been making me feel bummed out, man. <laughs> at first, nobody noticed the fierce rage she felt. In front of the other attendees at the funeral, Mino remained expressionless and just staring at the picture of the deceased on the stage. Nevertheless, after putting Minai's daughters to bed in another room and heading back to the hall to watch over the deceased in his final rest along the way. I felt like I could hear someone moaning from the woods behind the garden, so I gently stepped down from the veranda and headed into the garden. And then... Mino was pushing his forehead against a tree trunk, letting out a beastly roar filled with anger and sobs. The burning flames emanating from his sharp glare, and the look on his face as he roared like he was breathing fire, was something I will never forget. After that, Mino became so absorbed in searching for the culprit that he forgot to even eat and sleep. Ever since an, an investigation headquarters was established within public security, even people who know him in the past couldn't believe their eyes when they saw him. <laughs> Mino went off to gather information on his own after declaring that without relying on the other investigators. Even though he had several other cases he was investigating at the same time, it continued working like it was no burden at all. However, the primary mission of the public security is to protect national security and maintain public order, not to investigate the criminals behind murder cases. And what's more, upper management doesn't take kindly to field workers running on obsessions like avenging their, their colleagues, so finally, notice was passed down transferring the manager of investigation headquarters to the first investigation division. The streams and shouts of the investigators who heard it were loud enough to shake the large conference room. There was nothing I could do to comfort them, so I had no choice but to overbearingly cut them off and then take my leave. Nevertheless, the flames in their hearts didn't fade so easily. They continued to smolder. Especially Mino. The young investigators even appealed to upper management yelling threateningly and they were about to hit my office. Oh my god. It was the Lowell boys? Did we know that? That it was the Lowell boys? That Tomoe just doesn't know what he was investigating. Right, because it was officially declared an accident. Even so, upper management never heard their wishes. In the conclusion, the first division reach was based on testimony from firefighters, unforeseen accidental fire. Sparks from a faulty electrical socket caught and caught a nearby curtain on fire, which was the initial source of the fire, or so they say. Fucked up. 
えないありえないでしょうがそんな失火なら何なで未来さんは焼け死ぬまで火事に気づかなかったんです逃げた様子もなく寝室から遺体が発見されるなんて絶対にありえませんよ確かにな Out of all my subordinates, Yusuke was especially good at assessing the situation. His technique of acting carefree while observing his target was truly genius. Even when we went out drinking like usual, on the way home, he happened to notice that one of the people we walked past had a pistol. Oh shit. He was always alert and on guard. How could he have slept through a fire without noticing it and burned to death? Needless to say, Mino didn't buy it either. And when the investigation into the cause of death was shut off by upper management, I was fully convinced. The people who killed Yusuke and his wife were probably putting pressure on them, too. Pension and severance allowances are provided for a deputy inspector in case of accidental death when off duty. But even considering his years of service, I don't think that would amount to much. Meanwhile, someone pronounced killed in the line of duty is automatically promoted to ranks and declared a superintendent. On top of that, additional payments are prepared for the victim's bereaved family. It would have allowed two of them to live comfortably. Nevertheless, the personal department insisted that he would not be classified as killed in the line of duty. Damn, so they fucking robbed Tomoe and Manai too. That's so bullshit. Tomoe and Madoka, I meant. I clenched my teeth and squeezed my fist so tight. My nails dug into my palms. Yusuke was acting on my orders, pursuing something that seemed to be connected to the Lowell incident. In fact, the very day after his death, I was scheduled to hear an in interim, interim report from him. In other words, I can't help but think the murder of the Manai couple was an attempt to abstract that, masquerading as an accident. No, what else could it be? The justice of the police is absolute. We've stood up to dangerous situations and vicious criminals, backed by that pride and belief. But if such an absolute, unshakable evil entity were to appear, what should we do? Look the other way? Give up? Or... Fuck, man. Well, maybe they'll uh, receive some justice in this? I don't know. I mean, it sounds like it's probably connected to Tokyo in some way, right? Otherwise, like, what's the point? <laughs> If it is not Tokyo itself, it could be. All right, next we have lukewarm, lukewarm canned coffee. Oh, right here, nice. <sighs> no matter how many times I thought back on it, my anger never subsided. Damn. After entering the break room, I made no I made sure nobody else was inside, then slammed the personal change letter in my hand down on the floor. Personnel change, okay. It made no sound, just an empty response as it slid and danced along the floor, before stopping at the foot of the sofa a short distance away. I couldn't understand the meaning of this. The transfer notice itself was messy and inconsistent. The timing was far too abrupt, and the circumstances leading up to it were totally random. As a government official, I realized that personnel change were something of a regular occurrence, but this particular appointment was completely unacceptable. Oh, the Mino! I, 
Now I remember this guy. This is the guy that, uh, when, um, Yusuke moved to Moe, um, at the end of the last arc, uh, Mino was the person who, like, helped and trained her and stuff when she was sent away. That, that's who it is. This may be conceited of me to say, but ever since I was assigned to the career group, I was especially proud of my work in public security, fighting against terrorist groups masquerading as citizen organizations and false political group that only exist to line their own pockets. And even foreign intelligence agencies meddling with domestic politics from behind the scenes. All of them were tough assignments, and there was always risk of death involved in these investigations. There was hardly any time off, and even caused me to break up with the girlfriend I was dating before I was appointed here. Rip. But even so, I felt a sense of purpose toward the mission, that my duties were worthwhile. That's why I accepted the total lack of free time and being buried in work until the moment I went to sleep, and yet... So I cried out. I couldn't help but shout. But just then... Oh, here we go. As he said that, my boss, Commissioner Yamokai, entered the room. Then he noticed the personnel, changed ladder on the floor next to the sofa, picked it up, and dusted it off then handed it to me. ギレシュは新しい勤務先の上司に渡すのが基本だ。それに仕業をつけたり、まして用をしたりしては、金への傾聴を問われかねんぞ。君はキャリア組だ。それを知らないはずがあるまい。I suppressed my exploding anger as I snatched it from him. Even so, I failed to properly control my strength and got a little rough as I did. Yamotai-san turned around and bought two cans of coffee from the nearby vending machine. Then he said, here, as he tossed, it, uh, tossed one my way. I caught the can on instinct, but was surprised as soon as I felt the heat and nearly dropped it. Classic Yamamotai. Yamotai, and not Yamamotai. Yamotai-san watched me do so out of the corner of his eyes as he sat down of the sofa beside me, pulled the tab and took a sip, then turned back toward me. <laughs> then why'd you get off coffee? You meme. I slammed a can of coffee down on the table in front of Yamote san as I said that. He wasn't surprised at all though. He just rolled the can around in his hand and shrugged his shoulders. きらいの問題ではありません。私はこれでも公安の職務に誇りと少しの自信を持っています。それに自ら戦闘に立って指揮を取らねば、危険を犯して任務に当たる部下たちに申し訳ないと襲ってきました。それなのに、それなのに後方
状況を理解したまえ When he called out to me in that low voice, I suddenly turned back and caught my breath. Yamoto san sipped at his coffee while silently pointing at the sofa in front of him, with a look in his eyes clearly telling me to have a seat. I couldn't define an order for my boss, so I sat down as directed. Of course, I still didn't feel like drinking the coffee in front of me. Yamote-san gave me an immediate confirmation. Ciro is an institution acting under orders from the Prime Minister and other cabinet ministers that handles information gathering and investigation, plus operation and scheming for top secret activities related to politics, business, and the government. In other words, the culprits or key witnesses I was pursuing were government officials. Ooh. And what's more, these were people in fairly high positions. You're what? What happened? I got flustered and tried to make excuses, but after a quick glance at Yamokai's sharp gaze, I immediately realized it was useless. He of all people probably knew what I was doing with my time off investigating Minaya's stuff, and that's why they're removing him. Little snooper. え。俺も見ないさんの後を追って死ぬことになりかねないですか。なるほど。それで俺を being struck with that sharp, earnest attack, I couldn't help but freeze on the spot. The hot air had me sweating just a moment ago, receded immediately, and the anger and feeling I was standing on a slope quickly disappeared. Damn. He was kind of being rude. I mean, it's understandable, but because it's such a big change, but it's important work to press relations. Yeah, 
我々警察が権力に対抗するための力を築き上げるためのええ、もちろん。忘れるわけがないでしょ。Yep, that day I was shot in the knee by one of the perpetrators, Kazunari Tataguchi. Even to this day, I'm unable to sprint into the wound I suffered back then. But, truth be told, I should have died from Tataguchi's second shot. I was saved by my subordinate, who I considered a blood brother, the now departed Deputy Inspector Manai. <laughs> Because of public relations, setting stuff up beforehand. That helps, but had to be well orchestrated. Or it could have been twisted into something worse, right? たいしゅうの指示を得られるはずがありませんよ。確かにそういう見解もできるだろう。だが、もう一つ思い出したまえ。フィーダ大学老城事件の時も死者が出なかったとはいえ、警察と学生双方に任務を関わらず、セロンは
中に応じる気になったあの事件の解決には報道の力が大きな役割を果たしたと言っても過言ではないだろう確かにそうですね That wasn't taken into account during the Tea University incident. The press reporters and the photographers were just secured in a designated safe zone. And thanks to that, their cameras only captured video of students conducting heroic demonstration activities. So the reporters even described it as the dawn of a new era in their articles. On the other hand, the actions of the police, especially the riot police, were regarded as evil, display of power, so the general public criticized their oppressive demeanor. Yamokai, of all people, recognized the power and the value of the mass media more than anyone. ジョホモがあるわけでもないからね。だからこそ地道にそして確固たる足場を開拓して気づいていかなければならない。責任は自分だよ。そして遂行する能力も。それでも左遷だとお前は思うか。つまり山本さん。俺にその先兵をやれとそういうことですかそうだ君が皆井君の敵として追う事件に限らずこれからの事件捜査においてはマスコミの存在は毒にも薬にもなるものだその動きと流れを掌握するためにも我々は独自の専門機関を築き上げておかなくてはならない内閣の連中は内調自衛隊は陸爆二課そして我々警察は広報室というわけだなるほどね I felt a tremble of elation run through my whole body then rub my arms The disappointment and discouragement that had been lingering in my heart until a moment ago were nowhere to be found All that remained was a sense of purpose for the new mission I'd been entrusted with. Oh shit. Yarimasyo, Bro. This is the Tatano san, right? The. You. What's it called? You Destructive? Wait, this hasn't played before in the concerts, right? This is one of my favorite songs. Let it play for a bit. Get amped. This play during like Tachino's like life montage, like Acing University and stuff. Like right at the start of Matsuri Bayashi. If we could get the power of the press in our hands, we'd even have the power to oppose the heads of government. It might even be enough to get the ball rolling to avenge Minai-san. When I thought about that, all the troubles and hardships I'd be facing from now on seemed completely painless. Oh shit. He's locking it in. As I said that, I picked up the can of coffee in front of me, pulled the tab, and held it up to Yamokai san with a fearless feeling in my heart. He smiled softly back at me, then picked up his nearby empty can and clanked it into mine. The hot coffee had completely cooled off, but my entire body was filled with burning heat. Let's go! Always throw the, the Takano on to get pumped. Let's see. We probably have time for one more. Resignation notice. Yeah, we'll do that one. Then we'll do five this episode. That's pretty good. Resignation notice. 
real name, Tomoe. Is there light somewhere here? Here it is. The sky was dyed red by the setting sun, and even the clouds took on a crimson hue. I turned back and looked at the big clock near the roof of the school building. It was nearly 6 p.m., long past time to go home. Oh, this is her resigning from, uh, from the track and field team. I thought this was in regards to some police stuff. I made sure no one else was around, then shrugged my shoulders and smiled. Excuse me. My shadow was stretched along and thin on the ground, along the ground. My shadow was stretched long and thin along the ground, and somewhat vague. I should be used to the scenery, it's what it always looks like just before I leave school, and yet it felt strange. I turned back toward the voice calling me, Mr. Ed's boyfriend, who we met who was trying to get with Manai even though he had a wife. There was no need to even check who it was. I recognized him immediately from that voice came from my upper classman. That the voice came from my upper classman. <laughs> Having unconsciously been looking away, I rose my eyes upon hearing that and then looked back at Tsukata Senpai. He seemed angry, but also sad. It looked like he was deeply worried about me. Senpai? He scratched my cheek and answered with a bitter smile on my face. The truth is, I decided I would tell everyone about that after school tomorrow. So I didn't want to run into any of my peers who were doing club activities and intentionally killed time in the library to wait until later to head home, but it seems that was compl a completely wasted effort. <laughs> Damn, he actually seems like a good person and not a scumbag who potentially could have been the one that maybe not planted the bomb himself but informed the people trying to kill Manai because they did point out their car when they talked to him and it did explode later. Kinda sussy, but not necessarily him. Obviously there are big players at work. I bowed down as I said that to shake off all the thoughts running through my head. Even until the end, I wanted to go to that competition. But if I participated, there would be a lot of curiosity from the audience and interviewers awaiting me, and the commotion could be a great nuisance for other contestants. Tragic athlete lost her parents in a fire. Yeah, that would probably happen like that. Overcoming sadness while aiming for new records. To be blunt, it hardly felt like they cared. It even came across as malicious. Even if it's eye-catching, it bring me jo no joy to attract interest from something outside the competition. So, I decided here and now. It's definitely not right for me to make other the other contestants uncomfortable with my lingering regrets when they're so passionately focusing on the competition. Eh, I mean, I guess, I don't know. 
I can understand her not wanting to do it because of the tension and stuff, but I feel like you should just put your feelings first before the other competitors. ひとみ I gave Tsukata Senpai the brightest smile I could muster, then bit my lip as I turned around and headed toward the school gate. I'm sorry for not being more courteous, but please try to understand. Today was painful enough for me just turning down the guidance counselor. If you two try to stop me from quitting when I'm in a state like this, I'm sure I'll lose my resolve. So now, at least for today, let me be alone. Nope. Ooh, final jump. Final jumpy. Looking back, Tsukata Senpai had a friendly smile on his face and was pointing to the high jump bar that was set in place a short distance away. The coach bought a new one with the club expenses, saying it was, a, was in celebration of me reaching the national championship yes, last year. I was thrilled at the time and kept on jumping, not during morning practice, but even during lunch break. This is cute, man. He was a cute kid back then, though even, though it was implied that even Madoka was kind of sketched out about him as a student. He probably was kind of like a player, but it seems like he's being pretty genuine in this moment, at least. I'm sure of it. He really wanted to say something else. Don't quit. Let's do our best together for one more year. Even if he didn't explicitly say it, the look in Tsukata Senpai's eyes conveyed that to me. But he dared not say it because he knew the circumstances that led me to leave the track team. Always believing that people could only be saved with compassion and mercy, that was the kind of person Osama Tsukata was. Thanks to his compassion, my eyes suddenly started feeling heated. Right as tears were about to come spilling out, I looked up to the sky. Let's go! Jump it! When I changed into my uniform and came back to the track field, the high jump bar was already set in place. Gently gazing at the tick marks beside the pole, I suddenly went numb. The bar was set one centimeter higher than my personal best. Yo! Is this place of period instrumental? Rare song? I would recognize that anywhere, dude. Hey, yo, some sick music, this, uh, this connecting fragments arc, honestly. It's been a while since I've heard it, but it is a banger. From when I won at the national, uh, the bar was set one centimeter higher than my personal best from when I won at the national athletic meet last year. Although, up until now, I, I never managed to successfully jump this height. And the coach would never let me jump it, saying my form becomes clumsy when I'm overly focused on it. But now, the ban had been lifted. I'll never have to worry about my, own, my form getting worse. 
I believe. I believe! Then Tsutada Senpai adjusted the bar on the poles and turned to me. It's almost closing time. The chime will probably ring out by the time I made a single jump, signaling the remaining students to leave. One chance. One moment to shine. I nodded to my senpai, then lined myself up with the line on the ground. And then, I lightly inhaled and then exhaled, and at the same moment, I inhaled again, and I pushed my on my feet and broke into a run! I ran in a bow-shaped curve, gradually approaching the bar with light steps. And, the moment I reached maximum speed, when I saw the shadow of the bar right beside me, I kicked on the ground and jumped back first. My body soared high in the air as I gazed up at the dazzling sky. Almost an instant, I flipped back with my legs up in the air. In that moment of weightlessness, I sensed the sound of the bar lightly shaking before I landed on the soft map below me. Just tapped it. Nice. Record broken. I turned and stared at the bar. It was fainting it was faintly quivering to and fro, but in the end it was still on the pole standing still. That counts, right? It, it it doesn't matter if you touch it as long as it doesn't fall off, I think. The next moment, I heard Tsutada Senpai cheering. Actually insane. That's one way to leave the track and field team. I was delighted. And for a while, I just stayed there motionless on the mat with my arms and legs spread, spread wide. This feeling, this joy, is something I'll never forget. I held back the tears welling up inside me while carefully reflecting on that thought. That was sweet. The fucking music made it so epic. God, yo, this fragment to Latin has been pretty fun. Not gonna lie, the stories have been pretty interesting. This episode especially has been super emotional. We take those. But anyways, guys, we're done after end of here. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time where we collect more fragments. Currently, we have done eight fragments out of 35, so we're pumping. So, yeah, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Peace.